Welcome to this episode of Dolly Designs. If you would like to see how I made these earrings and some of these accessories, then stay tuned and keep watching. I'm starting with Julie's winter coat, her holiday outfit, her zigzag pajamas, and her basketball uniform. And in this clip, I'm kind of laying down some of the beads I had already thought of perhaps using with these outfits. I like to lay them directly on top of the clothes and see how the colors complement the colors of the outfits. Now, because I knew I was getting these outfits and I knew I was going to be making earrings for them, I kind of had some idea of certain beads I wanted to use. That's why I didn't really show a lot of me um, picking them out from the tackle boxes I keep my other beads in. I did kind of go back and forth with her coat because I had a few different purple beads that would have worked. So I was kind of seeing which ones I liked better and which ones I thought didn't do as much for the coat you know, because it has the fur and the purple and I wanted it to be really elegant without overpowering it. So here I'm assembling the earrings I made to go with Julie's zigzag pajamas. Now, just because there aren't loads of beads or like an intricate way of putting them together, that doesn't mean that the earrings won't look super cool. I wanted the focal point of these earrings in particular to be the pink pom-poms that I bought especially for this project, and I didn't want them to be too ridiculous because they are, after all, made to go with her pajamas, so I just slid them to go on an eye pin, and then um, these are the ones I made for her holiday outfit. I kind of was doing some of it off camera because it can be tricky to keep it all in frame and my camera position slipped a bit my tripod can be get a little loose sometimes but in um, that clip the little green uh, cords I was cutting I measured out three pieces for each earring that were double the length I wanted them to be then I knotted them around jump rings and then I'm using some glue to secure the knots and then twisting the ends of the suede cord with my fingers to um, make sure that they don't unravel with time I did this same technique with a pair of earrings I made for Marisol's tap outfit in the last episode of Dolly Designs that I made earrings for American Girls. And these are the different separates I'm making earrings for for Courtney. I also have my catalog out um, so I can get an idea of the different combinations of her separates. And of course there's her meat outfit. These are the earrings I made for her meat outfit. I really liked the initial earrings I made for my McKenna doll in the last episode of Dolly Designs. I was making jewelry for AGs in and I happened to have one M left which is great because C for Courtney and M for more and I used these colorful uh, beads, the little balls. I got those in a pack um, that I bought just for Lainey actually so even though it was kind of an expensive pack, it's already gone to use because I really, really, really like the beads. And I'm assembling them in a very similar fashion to what I did with McKenna's. I think that they worked really well and they were cool to look at but not overpowering. And then these are the ones I made to go with her cardigan. I already had planned out some of the beads. I did it off camera because there's a lot of trial and error. I'll kind of like pull things out, hold it up to the outfit, be like, no, I don't like that. Or mm, maybe it's kind of like when I dress it all, I'll sort of have like a selection of things that I have in mind, things that I forgot I had. I'll kind of play around with combinations of them. And I decided to assemble these. Um, so they were like a chain link. And then these are some really cool ones. I had the suede cord out I had bought just for Courtney, and I put these Lisa Frank heart beads that I've had since I was a kid on them, and I knotted them to keep the beads in place, and I used a little toothpick with glue to secure the knots. It's really important. I've tried making earrings with like ribbon and cord before without using glue, and they just don't stay even if you double knot them. So it's just better to put the glue on, and using a toothpick helps to apply it in like a precise area so you don't get glue all over the place. I mean it's kind of messy as you can see there's some glue on the floor but I mean it's Elmer's so it cleans up pretty nicely and then at the end I made sure to trim them together so they were the same length so they dangled nicely and symmetrically. And then here I was putting together um, earrings for Caroline's birthday outfit. I did these on, um, I believe, a different day because I was kind of making earrings whenever I had the chance. So I had my little art room blown apart and I kept these really simple. I just used a charm set and then a little bead to go with it. 
And then I made Caroline a hair accessory to go with her birthday outfit as well. And I actually had made one off camera that I really didn't like and I scrapped that and then um, I already had most of this one put together by the time I started filming because it was just me sewing little flowers on. I thought that would kind of be boring to watch me do the whole thing. So I'm attaching some little bows to it in this clip. And then in the next clip you can see that I am attaching snaps. I like to sew the snaps on instead of glue them these days. It was a little weird sewing on this lace piece, but I think it turned out alright. It was difficult making sure everything was sewn properly. So I did include some footage of Courtney wearing these earrings with various outfits, but because my camera was dying and she has so many separates, I didn't want to talk through each of those in great detail. So I'm going to show you the earrings that were inspired by certain pieces, and I'll also show you what they look like all paired together with complete outfits. So this is the splatter print dress, and I have these pom-pom charms, which I bought just for this project. I got a big pack of them at Michael's for $5. They're called pom-pom beads, and you can find them in the kids' art section. Before, I had only bought pom-poms in like $2 packs at Walmart um, that were mixed in with other beads, so you usually only get two pom-poms. These come in different sizes too. These are the smaller sized pom-poms. Um, because obviously I wanted multiple colors, and I thought that these would look really cool with this dress because they look kind of like the splatters of paint. And you can see there's like the green, the hot pink, and the bright blue. So these really neon 80s colors accent this dress perfectly. And these are some of the outfit combinations I paired with the pom-pom earrings, mostly with the splatter print dress, but some of them I just thought looked cool. And I photographed all these different outfit combinations that were featured in the catalog, if you're wondering, and they're pictured on my Flickr and Colleen's Courtney Moore album, if you want to see better close-ups of them. Then we have the ones I made to go with her meat outfit. She wears a lot of different layers, but I was really inspired by her shirt that says cool. So I did a C and an M for Courtney Moore. And I also like that they're letters because these are very stylized letters on her shirt. And I used pink and blue to pick up on the pink and blue accents. And you can see I didn't have um, like a C or an M in the same color. This was actually my only M charm left from making McKenna's earrings before. So they had to be mismatched, but I kept them to be the same length with the same beads and such above them. So they looked uh, more symmetrical in that way. But I did a blue bead over the pink one and a pink bead over the blue one and I alternated where I put the green and the green is inspired from the green lettering on her outfit and that way it has some like texture but the focal point is uh, the, the initials. And these are the meat earrings. They look really quite charming. And I think that um, because her hair is crimped now instead of curled, any earrings she wears really show up nicely. These are some of the coolest ones that I made. These are made to go with her shirt and tie. And the, these are really large beads that were just part of a pack I bought and they would never work on a fashion doll, even a Bratz doll, so I knew I'd have to use them for American Girl. But they're these like triangular shapes, they're really funky. And they remind me of something um, 80s or early 90s Barbies would wear. And I think that they look really awesome with this crazy insane printed shirt. And the color is actually like almost an exact match. And then I just paired them with these solid pink and yellow beads to pick up on the pink and yellow print that's very prevalent on this shirt. And I didn't want to make them too much bigger. I didn't want to add too many charms because they were already quite bulky. And the shirt is so loud. So I wanted to keep it pretty balanced. These colorful beads from a kid's art, pit, art pack as well as these C and M charms. They're from a kid's set. And these are the outfit combinations I put with these particular earrings. The zany tie shirt is really what they match the best, so I only pictured them with those, but Colleen could match them with a lot of things if she wanted. And I have her cardigan here, and these are Colleen's favorite pair of earrings I made for Courtney, actually. She really, really liked these. I love all of the different like colors and textures going on in this sweater, but I didn't want the earrings to be super chunky and bulky. I wanted the sweater to be kind of the focal point, just to have earrings that complemented them. 
So I have all of these funky little beads um, that came from different packs at Walmart over the years. And I thought that these pink textured beads picked up on the color of her sweater. And likewise, these green balls have little stars on them. And the green is the same color as the green printed here. And I think the stars, although Courtney doesn't have any stars in her collection right now, I thought that the stars looked very 80s anyways. And then there's these little purple hearts, which... Um, there's these little, I don't know if they're supposed to be little purple hearts on her sweater, but they kind of look that way. And having the three colors, it kind of complements the buttons. They're not the same color as the buttons, but they complement them. And again, I mostly paired these with the cardigan because they were inspired by the cardigan. But since Courtney's collection has a very strong color palette, a lot of the earrings can match more than just what they made them for, which is nice. And then I have this pair, which um, these heart charms are actually from an old Lisa Frank art kit that Colleen and I had growing up. We had bracelets that we made together, and I only have a few surviving beads, and none of them match. But I thought that the mismatchy look could work really well. So these weren't inspired by any particular outfit piece. I made these to kind of match the general color scheme of Courtney's collection, so Colleen could pair them with like whatever she felt like. The Instead of using findings, I used the bamboo cord, and I just put a little bit of glue on the bottom here so it didn't come undone, like it didn't fray. And these are the same colorful beads from the kids' art kit below the hearts. And then um, I had these left over from a project. They're like little clasp things, so they would clamp down the top of the the cord and um, then I just have the jump rings attached to that and even though these are technically not like beads they're just meant to be like a finding I think that the chunky like geometrical shape actually works for all the geometrical geometric designs in Courtney's collection so it kind of worked in that way too and these are the versatile earrings in action, the ones that weren't made to match any specific piece. And it works out great because you can see that some of her outfit combinations use some of her plainer pieces and less zany ones. For Courtney's last pair of earrings, I wanted to make her something out of Sculpey clay to go with her Care Bears pajamas which, as you can probably guess, I wanted to make her little Care Bears inspired by the pink one on the front of her nightie. I'm not familiar with the Care Bears really, so I don't know which character it is, but I had to mix my own pink clay up. I do have a pack of colorful clay, and there was a light pink, but it was a little bit too light, a bit too pale, so I added in some hot pink and mushed it together to create the slightly darker pink, and then this is just me making sure all of the parts are symmetrical. And this is when it was all assembled. I was smoothing things out and um, making sure that there weren't any lines or creases or imperfections. It took me a long time to shape these and I went back and forth with a lot of different designs. And then here I'm adding in um, the head pins, rather the eye pins, that's how I'm going to attach them to the earrings and so this has to be done before the baking process. And here I am sticking them in the oven to bake because this is polymer clay. I don't like to use air dry clay because it's known for cracking and if you can't finish working on it all in one day it'll dry out whereas polymer clay you can set it aside and it's not going to dry out. And then once it was done I sanded everything down. You can sand polymer clay. I just thought this would like smooth everything out a little bit more. I have never made anything quite like this for my dolls and I wanted them to be really special for calling and I wanted them to be the best I could possibly make them. And likewise, this was my first time um, using UV resin, which you're going to see in the next clip. But before I added the resin, I had to paint on the details. I liked this particular bear because uh, he or she had a rainbow on its belly. And I liked how the pink would contrast with the blue of the nighty. So I had some really tiny paint brushes here, the ones that I used to paint lettering on stands, and I did all the designs. This was actually the easiest part for me. I really like painting, but the sculpting was very difficult. And this is uh, a close-up of me painting on the rainbow. I already did the little faces at this part. It was really hard to um, get a close-up of all the painting. That's why there's not much in this video, because my hands kind of get in the way. But yeah, you can see 
but it was a very tiny, tiny area to paint, and I couldn't make these bears much bigger, but they would have been too big. And this was my first time using UV resin, so it was kind of a trial and error process for me. I bought this on Amazon, um, as well as the silicone mat and the nail lamp, which you'll see in the next clip, to cure it. It took a while for me to figure out how to cure it, but it finally worked, and I really liked the results. And these are the Care Bear earrings off of Courtney, so you can see them a little bit better. And they're supposed to be that bear. And this is Courtney in her Care Bear pajamas. So uh, if I had gone any bigger, they would have been a little too big. They're already kind of pushing it. But I think that they worked out really nicely and the resin gave them this shiny look. And the main reason why I wanted to put the UV resin on them is A, because I had bought it and I wanted to experiment with it. And B, I've heard from people who make like different charms and stuff that coating them in resin actually helps hold the little pieces together. And as you could see, I had to glue on one of their little arms after the baking process. So it kind of will just keep them all nice and together over the years because these legs were separate, the arms were separate, the ears were separate. It took me a long time to shape out the head to get it to look like a Care Bear because they have a very distinctive kind of like chubby cheek. I don't know, almost like a, a butternut squash shaped head. So yeah, I had to do all of that and it took me probably about two hours to make this pair. But I think they turned out okay. I mean, considering I've never done anything quite like that before, I'm, you know, decently happy with how they turned out. I think if you don't think Courtney looks adorable with those earrings in, you have no soul. The earrings that I made for Jolie's zigzag pajamas. I know you don't wear earrings with pajamas, but I thought these would be really fun to make jewelry for. I wanted to have yellow pom-poms to match these ones at the bottom of her pajama pants. These are like my favorite feature of this outfit, but the pack that I bought didn't have them. However, I thought that the pink pom-poms would work just as well. These are a bigger size than what I used on Courtney's. Um, the pack I bought had like large and small ones. And then I just tied in the yellow from like the print on her pants, the pom-poms, and this decal into these. So I actually kind of like that they're really plushy looking, like the slippers, that worked out really well. And these are the earrings I made for Julie's basketball outfit. I used this bamboo cord and this green color. Now I would have ideally liked it to have been lighter, like her really awesome hair ties. I thought that those were one of the coolest parts of this outfit, and that's what inspired these earrings. But um, this was the closest color I had. I think they look really cool. Again, totally not realistic, but I don't mind. And I think these will look really cool with Ivy because she has jet black hair and this color will pop really nicely when she wears this. And my whole um, reason for really wanting this other basketball uniform was so I could put both Ivy and Julie in basketball uniforms since I have the very original basketball uniform. And these are the earrings I made to go with Julie's winter coat. I kept it really simple. These were actually part of a larger chain, but I didn't want to go overboard um, and have like a lot of different charms because this coat is so kind of elegant, even if it is paired with um, her tunic outfit, which is a lot brighter. And so these are pretty uh, dangly. I have a couple jump rings on here because this is so large that if it was up higher, it wouldn't have um, any movement. It would kind of bump up against her face, but yeah, I think the purple and gold look really good with the purple and tan. And these are the earrings I made for Julie's Be Forever holiday dress. I kept it kind of simple because, but like fancy, because her outfit is simple but fancy. I love these charms. I got them in a pack at Walmart a while ago, and the paisley print, it kind of looks paisley like her dress but it has a few extra colors, so it adds a nice little pop. And then I have these, like, they almost look like a disco balls. They're little silvery things that look really fancy and complement the uh, white areas of her outfit. These are actually some of my favorite pairs that I've made for Jolie. And 
here we have Caroline in her birthday outfit. I'm so excited to have this, just as a side note. It was one of the last two things I was missing for her. Still need a work dress. So, um, I wanted to keep her earrings and hair accessories really delicate, but beautiful to complement the delicate beauty of this dress. It has this really stunning pattern on it. It's actually not one of her um, better quality items from her collection, and mine I purchased in kind of damaged condition on eBay. It had some staining over here, and you can see there's a really slight little hole on the sleeve, but the stain came out when I washed it. So. I made these really delicate little earrings. This white flower charm came from a pack I bought at Walmart that I actually bought to make Laney earrings. These are some of the leftovers. And I think that they go really well with the white flower design on the front of this dress. And then this little uh, pearlescent blue bead is almost the same exact color as her baby blue dress. And I just, like I said, wanted to keep them really delicate and kind of dangly. And then her hair accessory I went back and forth a lot with. This is actually the second one I made. The first one I made was totally different. It had like a solid blue ribbon and it was gonna have like pearls on it, but it just felt like it was too much. It was overpowering Caroline's head and it was kind of difficult to work with that satin. So instead I dug through my bag of scrap lace and I found this piece. I'm not exactly sure where it came from. I think it might've come from my friend's grandmother when she passed away. She gave me a bunch of her um, art supplies and this was just a little scrap piece that I cut to um, fit around her head and it is so there are snaps sewn to it which you could see me adding on because I don't really like to um, like tie things around Caroline's hair because she has a very thin wig and I don't want to like pull out any hairs by accident by trying to tie a knot so there are snaps and they're sewn and these flowers and bows are all sewn Colleen reminded me that we had bought a little pack of multicolored roses at Walmart and they're this perfect baby blue color and I like the little hints of green from the leaves because it kind of adds a little bit of extra color and um, then these bows are also from Walmart and I thought that they would complement the little bow bows on her shoes, which these are sheer bows with little pearls, but I think that the little added ornate detail kind of just adds a little something extra to this outfit because my Caroline doll was not in the best shape when I bought her. I mean, I intentionally picked out my doll on eBay because she was a fixer upper. So she has this very thin wig and she has like a lot of shorter pieces that come out of it. Uh, so for me, having like hair accessories is a really important thing whenever I get her outfits. I like to make her a hair accessory to kind of distract from her limpish wig if the outfit doesn't have say like a bonnet. So I didn't show the process of me making this hair accessory because I didn't really make it, but I thought maybe giving you guys some ideas if you're looking to spice up your American Girl outfits or other doll outfits, you can use recycled materials. So Courtney actually has like a tool headband that you can purchase from American Girl in like a an accessory set of sorts, but it's expensive and all it is is a piece of tool. So I have this piece and another one just like it that came from a gift bag that we got last year. And I always save materials like this that I can repurpose. And um, it's actually a little bit darker than the one that they make for her, but Colleen says she wanted it to be a little bit darker. And it has this like little shimmery glitter in it too. So it works really nicely, very 80s. And then I also found this is a bow that came from one of my lol surprise boxes i think it was one of the present surprise dolls and it has this really awesome geometric print that reminds me of courtney's um tie shirt and um the color scheme like this magenta is like perfect so colin can put this with various outfits i just tied it back in a bow and you can stick a clip through the knot that way you don't have to like glue clips down, you can recycle one or two metal clips or bobby pins and um, this can go in her hair. I also have this hair accessory that I made for Rebecca off camera with a scrap piece of lace. I don't know where that came from honestly and I tied it into a bow and then I stitched it so it would stay closed and I sewed this cute little heart button on it to kind of match her satin pajamas. And I like how this frilly lace is the same color as the piping on her pajamas and the kind of ornate texture of it reminds me of the loops for her buttons. 
Thank you guys for watching this episode of Dolly Designs. I hope you enjoyed. There are pictures of most of these creations on my Flickr if you, I don't know, want to read about them or whatever. And until next time, love your dolls, love yourself, and love your life.